Today and tomorrow, I want to look at a poem by the 20th century American poet Wallace Stevens, who is a contemporary of T.S. Eliot and Robert Frost, and whose reputation has continued to climb um, over the past decades. Wallace Stevens, like Dana Joya, who was here um, in a Zoom meeting with our students last Friday evening, was um, a businessman. In fact, Wallace Stevens worked his way up to be one of the vice presidents of the Hartford Insurance Agency. And in the meantime, kept up a poetic career that I think would have surprised many of his colleagues in the insurance office. Um, Stevens was a very heady um, intellectual poet, but also one whose early work could certainly be related to the imagist movement with poems like uh, Ezra Pound's In a Station of the Metro or William Carlos Williams' um, this is just to say about eating the plums in the refrigerator. Uh, Stevens was much concerned with a topic also very much on the mind of W.B. Yeats and T.S. Eliot, which is that in the 20th century, the poet has lost the cultural background that used to give great poets a kind of understood world. Um, with the cultural fading of Christianity as a force, what Nietzsche called the death of God, uh, the poet has a new task. This may seem strange to those of us who are Catholic um, and who find in Hopkins a, a, an untroubled uh, affirmation of his faith, but to other poets, it was a true uh, burden to have to come up with the understood world behind a, a single simple lyric poem. So Wallace Stevens in this poem called Of Modern Poetry is dealing with this problem and I want to bring him into conjunction with the Catholic uh, philosopher and theologian Jacques Maritain both today and tomorrow to try to understand better what Stevens is getting at, and also what Eliot and Yeats and Frost and others of this era face in terms of their poetic task. So here's Of Modern Poetry. What I'll do is read through the poem. I might repeat this tomorrow, but I want to go to a quotation from Maritain that it seems to me helps get at what it is that Stevens is, is arguing. Of Modern Poetry by Wallace Stevens. The poem of the mind in the act of finding what will suffice. It is not always had to find. The scene was set. It repeated what was in the script. Then the theater was changed to something else. Its past was a souvenir. It has to be living to learn the speech of the place. It has to face the men of the time and to meet the women of the time. It has to think about war, and it has to find what will suffice. It has to construct a new stage. It has to be on that stage, and like an insatiable actor, slowly and with meditation, speak words that in the ear, in the delicatest ear of the mind, repeat exactly that which it wants to hear at the sound of which an invisible audience listens, not to the play, but to itself expressed in an emotion, as of two people, as of two emotions becoming one. The actor is a metaphysician in the dark, twanging an instrument, twanging a wiry string that gives sounds passing through with through sudden rightnesses, wholly containing the mind, below which it cannot descend, beyond which it has no will to rise. It must be the finding of a satisfaction, and may be of a woman, of a man skating, a woman dancing, a woman combing, the poem of the act of the mind.
Now, obviously, Stephen's poem needs much more explication than I can possibly give it today and tomorrow. But I do want to at least go back to those first lines and see what it is that Stevens is talking about in more context. When Stevens says in the sec beginning of the second line, it, that is the mind, has not always had to find what will suffice. The scene was set, it repeated what was in the script. Then the theater was changed to something else. Its past was a souvenir. When Jacques Maritain is writing about Dante, the great Catholic poet of the Middle Ages, he addresses precisely this issue, and he praises what he calls Dante's luck. I'm just going to read the paragraph, and I'll come back and, and talk about it in, a, in another session. Dante wrestled with his time, which forced into exile the poet threatened with death. But as concerns the spiritual quality of the cultural heritage, he was blessed by his time. Then the human mind was imbued with the sense of being, and nature appeared all the more real and consistent as it was perfected by grace. Being still turned toward wisdom, still permeated with rationality and mystery, both of which descended from the uncreate word. Still softened by the blood of the incarnate word, the universe of the late 13th century, with its ontological hierarchies mirrored in the hierarchies of intellectual disciplines, ensured to the intelligence and emotion of a poet, despite all the evil fevers, discords, crimes, and vices of the time, a state of integration and vitality that the modern man has lost. Dante participated with all his fibers in an organic order which already felt the first breaths of a newly born spring and did not know it was already decaying. When Stevens writes that it is not always had to find this, what will suffice for, for the mind. Uh, he's speaking precisely of what Maritain means here, that Dante has the great luck to receive as his heritage. For the modern poet in the 20th century, the theater has been changed to something else. Its past was a souvenir. So tomorrow, let's look at what it is exactly that that means the modern poet must do.